Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will be doing exponents and roots again. But we'll be doing for negative numbers. We're working with negative numbers, but the concept is the same. Uh, but one thing you need to be careful of is the parentheses. For example, negative 3 to the 4th power and negative 3 to the 4th power are different. These two are very different. The one up here means negative is outside and we're just doing um, multiplying uh, 3, 4 times. This is what the top expression means. The bottom one means we're multiplying negative 3 four times. You see the difference? So here the negative is inside the parentheses. So in other words, the negative is also being raised to the fourth power. So how will this affect our answer? So on the top one, negative sign is here, and then we do 3 to the 4th power. 3 times 3 is 9. The 3 times 3 again is 9, so that's 9 times 9, which is going to be 81. So that's going to be negative 81. On the denominator, or not the denominator, on the bottom expression, uh, we have negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. Negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. Multiply those two, you get 81. So the answers are the same except for the sign. And this is what you need to be careful for when raising negative numbers to a power. If there is a negative uh, sign uh, with no parentheses like this, this means that you have to do this part first this part first and then attach the negative sign to the answer. But for this case, it means you have to do negative 3 and raise that to the fourth power. Okay, and when a negative number, whether it be negative or positive number, if it's raised to an even power, in this case it is an even power, right? 4 is an even number. If it's raised to an even power, it is going to be uh, positive. Okay, let me show you uh, with 1. So for example, if I have a negative 1, I'm, I'm squaring it. That's going to be negative 1 times negative 1, which is going to be positive 1. Let's do negative 1 cubed. That's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 here is going to be positive 1. Positive 1 times negative 1 is going to be negative 1. Negative 1 to the 4th power is going to be negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. These are going to be positive 1. These are going to be positive 1. So the answer is going to be positive 1. And you see the pattern, right? Negative 1 to the 5th power will become negative 1. So when the powers are even, the answers are positive. When the powers are odd, the answers are negative. This is for negative numbers. Now, of course, if, if the 1 is positive, so if you have positive 1 to the third power, that's going to be positive no matter what. But this is the rule for uh, when you're raising a negative base. And also, this is the rule specific to when the negative sign is inside the parentheses. If the negative sign is outside the parentheses, like in this case, negative 1 cubed, negative 1 fourth, negative 1 to the fifth. In this case, you're doing this first. You're doing this first and then doing the negative sign, right? You're doing this first and then doing the negative sign. So in this case, the 1 squared is going to be 1, and then you're attaching the negative. 
In this case, 1 cubed is going to be 1, and then it's going to be a negative sign. In this case, 1 fourth is going to be 1 negative sign, 1 negative sign. So in this case, when there were no parentheses, all of the answers were negative uh, because of the method that we've used. But when the negative sign is inside the parentheses, if the power is even, as it was with 2 and 4, the answers were positive. The powers were odd, the answers were negative. And this is actually true for any other negative numbers, not just 1. And you can see that up here with the 3. When 3, negative 3 was raised to a fourth power, fourth even power, it became a positive number. And you'll see the same thing happening when you're squaring it. Negative 3 squared is going to be a positive 9. But negative 3 cubed is going to be a negative 27. And if you don't believe me, then you can actually try multiplying negative 3 three times, and you're, you're going to get negative 27. Okay, so when you are multiplying or you're raising a negative base, if the power is even, the answer is going to be positive. If the power is odd, the answer is going to be negative. Okay, now how about the root of negative numbers? Roots of negative numbers. Uh, let's say we're trying to find the square root of negative 4. Now, you, you remember that the square root of 4 equals 2, right? Because 2 times 2 equals 4, or 2 squared equals 4. Which 2 of the same numbers gives you negative 4? Does negative 2 work? If you do negative 2 times negative 2, does that equal a negative 4? Well, negative 2 times negative 2 actually gives you a positive 4. So this negative 2 doesn't work for the square root of negative 4. And actually, when you're multiplying the same number with itself, you can never actually get a negative number. So there are no two numbers that you can multiply that are the same that gives you negative 4. There are no two numbers. Uh, there are no two real numbers. I need to be careful here. There are no two real numbers that multiplies to give you a negative 4. And the same thing is true for any other negative numbers. Negative 9, there are no two numbers. No two same real numbers. That gives you negative 9. Um, negative 16 as well. So when you have to find a square root of a negative number, the answer is always going to be no real solution. And the reason I'm putting the word real here is because there are solutions that are not real. And you might be wondering what, what, does, what does real and not real mean? Um, it's not important for this part. Later on, you'll start learning imaginary numbers, which can give you a solution for these. but for now, just remember that you can't really solve this with the things that we've learned so far. Okay, so whenever you have to take a square root of a negative number, there, there's going to be no real solution. So this actually works for any negative number, negative, even negative 1, square root of negative 1, there's no, no real solution. No real solution. Okay. But, but if you are taking a cube root of a negative number, for example, let's say we're taking a cube root of negative 8, there is a solution. Because if you do negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, this part is going to be positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2, it actually equals negative 8. So there is a number, there is a real number, when multiplied three times with itself, gives you negative eight. Right? And, and same thing with, with, other, um, with other cube roots. Negative 27. 
see the negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Now this is going to give you 9. 9 times negative 3 is going to be negative 27. So negative 3 is a solution for this one. So why does cube root, why does cube root have a solution but square roots don't have a solution? So this side, this side are okay, but this side is not okay. And the reason is because on this side, the index is an odd number. When the index is an odd number, it's okay for the, for the number inside to be negative. You can still find the root, but if the index is an even number, as it is with square roots, and same thing with, with the fourth root of, of negative 16 as well, there's, no, there's not going to be a solution here. Uh, when the index is even, then there's going to be no real solution. When the index is even, and if uh, the number inside is a negative number, then there's going to be no real solution. Okay, so this is what you need to be careful uh, when finding roots of uh, negative numbers. Okay, you can find the roots of uh, negative numbers if the index is odd, but you can't find any real solutions for roots of negative numbers if the index is even.